Okay, here we are with uh, Lix document processor, and it doesn't it doesn't open with a, a window you can type in because you can make a choice of whether to start from a template or um, start a new document from a default template. And that's what we're going to do because it's easy to learn the concepts. Now, the first concept um, it's important is that um, Lix works by having you by having you enter and leave and choose different um, environments like we're in the standard environment and this is the environment that's uh, meant for um, typing regular text and so here's a few words and to enter math we have to enter a different um, environment a math environment we're going to use we're only going to use the standard environment and three math environments now to get give you an idea of what's going on here if i press the space bar here and if you look at the bottom of the screen, it says you cannot type two spaces this way. Um, what you have to do is enter, you, you can put an extra space in, but you have to put a special code in to do it because Lix is a front end to the LaTeX typesetting engine. And the way it works, it's sort of a programming kind of concept in which your document is um, the source code and it's sent to a compiler which transforms your document source code into a presentable form here a pdf and then after you've compiled it or, or transformed it you with these blue arrows chasing each other icon you click on the two eyes to view um, the pdf document make sure it's what it looks presentable and then um, you have the product you have your document now that's actually what is going to happen um, for your assignments i'm going to give you a template um, with already half filled in a Lix file that has the problem statement and some suggestions about how to proceed. You're going to solve the math problem, present your solution, um, updating it with the blue arrow icons. Click on this, you'll get the PDF. So you'll save that to a, a known place um, and then upload it on your Piazza work thread. So let's see how to do um, some math. Well, the first um, environment we can um, deal with is the inline math environment. Now there's two ways to get an inline math environment. One is to go to insert math and then do the inline formula. The other way is over here, the um, sigma, which just gives you one math box. Now, when you're in math mode, you'll see it has down here a special math menu of zillions of different, each one of these is actually a menu. Like here's Greek letters, Here's all, here's all kinds of arrows. <clears throat> here's, here's some math op symbols, um, operators, different, you know, crazy things. Okay, so most of that we're not, we're not going to use. And um, so what you, once you type in a math here, let's type a little formula here, say A. Um, now, if I type a space here, I go out of the math environment. If you want to move, you don't really move because you're not really formatting things. The LaTeX engine is going to format stuff for you. You just type what you, the meaning, the content. So I'm going to type say A equals five and it formats it for me. Now this isn't exactly the format it'll appear, but it's an, it's an approximation. Okay, so then if I want to go then and type some more math, I can type some more math or I can press the arrow key to leave the math environment. Then I can press space and 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 type a few more um, words. And then I have an, a, a small equation in, a, in the middle of a sentence. Okay, well, let's say that I want a longer equation and to have it reside in its own line. Then I come up onto insert choose math and come over here to display formula and I get a math box on a line of its own. Okay, so then I have a longer formula, for example, perhaps a linear equation 5x plus um, 4y and get you have to um, get used to the idea that a space bar doesn't enter a space, it changes sort of the where you are like it would put me out of math mode. And I want don't want to do that until I have my equation. Then I can use the arrow key to say go out, and I'm outside math mode because the little if I press the other way, I can see I'm in math mode because of these little um, corner arrows. Okay, they disappear, and then now the t temptation here is 
if I want to continue in the same paragraph in the next line, the temptation here is to press the enter key. But the enter key in Lix and LaTeX is the, th is the code you use for a new paragraph. So unless you want a new paragraph, what you do is you just start typing and it will typeset it for you. Uh, this is the next, uh, not paragraph, this is the next uh, line in the same paragraph. Okay. And then I can go and do another display formula or some more text. And one of our first topics um, that we started with, um, in the, we start with in the course is Gauss's method. And um, with Gauss's method, we need like a linear system on one side, a row operation and a transform linear system. So we need the, the last math environment we're going to use, which gets us this way, is the EQN array. It gives us three boxes. Now, maybe it's not quite right that I said we're only going to use three because we can put another math box inside this math box. For example, for a linear system or for a matrix or anything that sort of has multiple rows or columns, we can choose this sort of multiple, this big array of boxes that says insert matrix. And let's say I want to insert two equations. Well, I only need, I only need um, two rows here. And I'm going to put like an X term, a plus, a Y term, an equals, and like a constant. So this five is the right number for of, of columns for that system. And it's useful to choose a, a justification alignment. So in its slot, so to speak, it's going to be either right to the center or left. So if I choose right, center, right, center, right, that's going to put the, the term to the right, the operator plus in the middle. So this is a nice thing. I don't need to have a decoration. If I was doing a matrix, I could click here and put brackets or parentheses uh, around the system. I click OK. And I've got my little math boxes ready for my um, uh, 5x. Then use the arrow key to move over. Do a plus and say 6y uh, for my next term equals 8. OK, use the arrow key to move around and then say um, 4x minus um, 3y, I'm just making this up, the numbers aren't important here, um, um, 9. Okay, so there's my linear system. And um, if it, it doesn't, isn't going to look exactly that way, it's going to be nicely formatted when we do it. Now, let's, how do we do a row operation? We come over here to the middle one, we're going to put our row operations in here. And there's not a good um, way to find down here in the menu items, the way we're going to put um, row operations. So you'll type in a backslash X, and then you want the X right arrow, lowercase, and we want this first one here. Okay, what that's going to give us is, now it's a little bit small, so we can, we can um, hold down the control key and um, I'm using my, the, the wheel and my mouse and you can zoom in and you can see the zoom level. So that way we can, we don't have to, um, the typesetting will sort of adjust the sizes, but it's hard to see it um, if it's too small. So in here, we're gonna do our notation for the, um, and I'm using my arrow keys to move around. So now I'm gonna type a Greek letter row because that's how we're gonna do a row operation. Um, now we could, I could choose the letter row here or I could type backslash R H O then underscore say row row one. And now I, it, it, it's hard to see, but let me, let me say maybe move in a little bit that the, um, these little cor these little pink corners show that I'm still in, I'm not in the, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm there's, I'm in the lower math box here. If I go, I, if I'm, over here, let's see, I'm inside the subscript. So if I pressed something there, I'd be in the subscript. So I want to come out of the subscript and say, do uh, 
come in there and then right arrow. Now, if I want to make that become the symbol, I can wait a second, it will give me, then I see the symbol and then I will say, um, I actually don't want an arrow there. So I want say plus uh, row two, then we have a row combination operation. So now the question is, do I have to go through this whole process again? Um, of, of going down here, getting this thing and typing all this stuff in. And the answer is you don't. What you do is I want to copy, I want to cut and paste this side of the equation. So I click on the right and I want to, I want to be in the math box and uh, I'm having a little trouble grabbing on. That's one of the problems with licks is, oh, there, that's too much, okay? So I want to be in, ah, there. You're usually you have to be right on the boundary. And if I want to copy something, you want to get the whole thing solid like this, not just the little pieces blue. Now, um, there's a key for doing this. You want to copy control C. So if I called my control, now this may be a problem for people with Macintoshes because the your, your um, operating system may intercept the control key. So then you may have to use the copy here. And then um, I'm using control V or right click. The problem is in a math mode, right click um, doesn't get you cut and paste. So you might have to come up here and do paste. But then I get, I get the whole linear system. Then I can go through and implement by editing. Well, this is row one plus row two. I would have here nine and six plus minus three would change this to a, pl uh, a plus. And then it would be a three because I had six plus minus three is three and eight plus nine is 17. Okay, now let's say I need, this isn't in row echelon form because I'm just messing around. Let's, but I need another row of these three boxes. Well, down here, I can just click on, um, um, I wanna be outside, I don't want another row in the linear system. I want uh, another row of the whole line. So I, I just in this, you have to watch these little corners here and then click this. And I've got now um, a next row and I can cut that, paste it here, then edit my row operation. Then come and, and get um, the linear system and type it that way. And this way I can do my Gaussian method down the page rather than extending too far to the right. Because although I could see that in the Lix document, in the PDF, it will just be cut off and invisible and, and I won't be able to see your work. Okay, well, that's it for now. Um, an introduction to how to use Lix. This basically gives you 90% of all the Lix stuff that we're gonna do um, in this course. And it, 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 you, if you buy into it, then you'll be much happier than if you resist it. Um, and so we'll go on to other things now.